All right. Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to round number two of our off-world trading company January 14th FFA tournament. This time we've got Steph, Dryad, Rahi, and NC Game Wizard. And, of course, once again, we're being joined by Blues for some commentary. So I'm seeing a very, very high food price. It's kind of the first thing that jumps out to me. And then the map looks absolutely awful. But players should be used to that by now when I'm doing the hosting. So hopefully they'll be able to handle it okay. Yeah, this is actually one of the maps I helped test. The thing that stuck out to me when I played it was that it was a glass colony. And there's only one good source of silicon. There is plenty of low silicon available. Yeah. That, that is going to be important for our players here. I am wondering if they're even considering that with the current found. If they've noticed and want to make use of it or if they're just hoping to ignore it and get through upgrades very quickly on the back of food we'll just have to see a bit concerned about nc game wizards found that's some pretty weak carbon and settling for a uh, low aluminum with no adjacency feel like things are going to be a bit slow for him there yeah it's always bad when you're just collecting fewer resources out of the a gate. One of the most important upgraded. things in Off-World Trading Company in general, of course, is to keep your claims efficient. Make sure they're all making as much money as possible at all times. And well, unfortunately, when there just aren't very many resources on the tile, you're typically just not making as much money as it turns out. The black so always, always going to be a difficult start when you uh, get off the ground with low tiles alone. And on top of that, the other thing about NC Game Wizard is I really don't like the the territory around him. If we just look, he just doesn't have a lot of space for buildings there. I mean, he can fit maybe two triangles adjacent to his base, and that's it. You can try to snake some triangles out one way, but with power surges and EMPs, that's something you always have to be concerned about. Absolutely. That's actually the primary thing that I like about what Rahi's done is even even though you don't have the steel adjacent to the base, and that's certainly a concern with pirates on the board, at least you're a scientist against power surges and EMPs, and that's always that's always just an advantage, right? And that's suddenly black market effects that don't work against you, but we already have the pirates dropping. Unfortunately, I can't answer that right now. Go away. Leave me alone. Sorry about that, everyone. Actually, it was a mistaken call anyway. Okay, then. Okay. Well, pirates down on Rahi. Dryad pulling in quite a lot of steel. Certainly has its advantages. Steph working toward the upgrade. I'm not sure. Actually, Rahi has bought an insane amount of glass. That's just what Rahi is completely focused on right now. Not something I can really readily disagree with. Nice least, to have a guaranteed resource. Yeah, it seems like a reasonable move. Just make it more expensive for your opponents. Also, just it's going to be rising in value, and you're going to need this glass anyway. Uh, she, she did sell out a fair chunk of the glass to uh, upgrade. That's also fine. Yeah, but that's that's just fine. I, I like the move. Just making the decision, all right, well, this is going to definitely make me money. Right now, it's definitely increasing in value, as you were saying. So it's a way to just invest your money in something that is guaranteed to be profitable, which is usually something that's kind of difficult to do in the very, very early stages of the game. So it's always nice when you can identify a move like that and make decent use of it. Also, Rahi, immediately upon upgrading, dropping a solar panel to crush the pirates and making sure to get plenty of claims up in order to connect to the steel. So suddenly looking a lot more secure on this initially slightly rocky scientific found. And also picking up that high, well, originally claiming the high so. silicon tile. Looks like she changed her mind on that, going for the lows instead. An expansive HQ has okay, like grabbing the high bid better. Uh, it would have been significantly farther away, so shipping glass would have been difficult, but it's still a bit difficult with these tiles, and taking that high just denies everyone else, forces them to go for either a medium or a pair of lows. Yeah, and I never personally, I'm never really in favor of keeping glass separated from your base. Glass chems and electronics are all significantly more difficult to have separated from your base than the life support resources and steel. 
simply because you have to ship a resource out to them almost every time. Electronics, this isn't necessarily always true. It is actually possible to get silicon, aluminum, and carbon all to that building without shipping it. But for glass and chems, you always have to ship a resource out. So you either need teleportation or your production is just going to be a bit slower than is ideal. And that's what we're seeing from Rahi right now. That said, at least you aren't paying for the silicon. One thing we haven't talked about, uh, NC Game Wizard, uh, moving into a lot of power point on getting to HQ3. He has a nice little line of turbines, goon in the middle. Hard to attack him, he's already making power money off of that. We'll see if he can uh, sort of make that into something that helps him finish the game despite his kind of weak found. Absolutely. That's always a nice move to make when you're up against several other steel users in particular. And they're going to be even looking to get into reactors before long, if they can. They've all been delaying power a bit, so I think you're right. That's really kept NC Game Wizard in it, because he's actually just making straight money off of this power, rather than paying through debt. For a nice little thing for him to have access to. Okay, well... Rahi has kept food down the entire time for everybody. Dryad went ahead and popped into it just a little bit, but unfortunately, without the full committal, really not proving all that successful. So it looks like Rahi is going to be our first player on up to HQ4 if they would like it. Meanwhile, Steph has been moving through upgrades just fine, but really, really struggling when it comes to debt in particular. This is why I was actually nervous about the high silicon for New any of our players. It's so far away. And these fuel prices, in particular, I imagine this aluminum has been causing serious, serious problems for Steph, gaining a huge amount of debt. Nice little geotherm auction for our players. I would have been surprised if it went for 9,000. That is a whole tile. And a geotherm's nothing to be disappointed about right now. I expect this to end up in the 16 to 20 range, but we'll just have to see. Congratulations. Yep. Right. 18 over to Rahi. No big surprise. Always a nice little pickup to just grab an extra claim as a scientist, since your claims are typically so much more efficient than everybody else's. And also we see a patent lab out of Rahi, so Rahi feels like an They're in a, HQ has been a pretty powerful position at this point. Probably going to be looking, HQ up, HQ has been looking at a teleportation, slant drilling. Yeah, let's see. Teleportation queued up first. No big surprise there. I do find it interesting that we've actually got two glass kilns combined with a silicon quarry over let's here. Get our science on. Just a little bit different, but... Make sure that you're actually uh, not flooding one resource too much. And of course, as discussed earlier, it keeps you from having to ship even more oxygen on the out, which can always be a concern. I would have really liked to see pirates, I think, down on some of this glass. Yeah, there were as the early was. pirates on the steel, but just never after that. Yeah. Maybe people just being a bit too concerned about dealing with power to pay attention there. Perhaps. And of course, the teleportation coming through in about 15 seconds, that's no longer going to be an option. But, And it is worth pointing out that Steph has been unable to use the black market as he's just been in such a bad position when it comes to debt this entire time. Hmm. Even moving into the electrolysis reactors, which means less fuel debt, of course, but also ramps up that power consumption significantly. And so, yeah, things are just looking very difficult for Steph here. I had not too far behind on the debt front. No, both of our expansive players just not really respecting that high power price. In this game in particular, I'd say a whole lot of steel production coming down and not enough power to compensate can pretty re easily result in this situation. Because even though NC Game Wizard has had three tiles committed to power this whole time, it's worth noting that, first of all, they aren't in a triangle, so there's less adjacency. And then second, it's a strong moderate and a strong wind. So they're not super high powered either. And Rahi's been in a very similar position until the geotherm auction. Just enough power to get by, 
not enough to actually knock the price the down. Oh man, is Rocky gonna get this? How could one refuse such a wonderful plot of land? Doesn't seem like anyone can stop her. Nope. I mean, Dryad's a whole 18 short, and he can't acquire that in three seconds. So Rahi, it looks like, is just going for the kill immediately. No one in a position to uh, buy into Rahi's stack to punish. This is probably going to pay off quite nicely. Absolutely. Always interesting when so... you can actually get a majority in successfully this early in the game. There are plenty of times where you can succeed in a majority buy this early. But then the other two players will just gang up on you and kill you too. And then they're left in a fairly equal 1v1 rather than a situation like we have now where that's basically just a free extra six stock and small amount of income and an entire player you don't have to deal with later in the game, which as the leader is always an ideal situation to be in. An expansive HQ has been upgraded. Okay, Steph. Gonna be our first player up to HQ5, but of course, still has $169,000 of debt with an interest tick just five hours away, game time. Ooh, needs things are still looking scary. It needs to pay off 26000 to get back into that C range. It doesn't look like that's gonna happen. Yeah, especially because power has dropped down to $8 at this point. Things are just looking quite, quite difficult. Rahi did pick up Superconductor. Teleportation, carbon scrubbing, financial instruments, and that's why I'd say Rahi is still easily in the dominant position here. The combination of the subsidiary, the lack of debt, and all these patents really set you up for a strong, strong late game. And even you have the potential to maybe knock out the HQ level 5 player instead of upgrading, which is what we're going to see Rahi attempt right now. That said, if there's one thing Steph does have, it's some cash. He should be able to survive this. Uh, Rahi already starting to sell out. The black yeah. market is online. Saying never mind, hopefully gonna go for that upgrade pretty soon here. Rahi does have to be nervous though about uh, taking the upgrade and then maybe buying to a majority. NC Game Wizard in particular, combined with Steph, if they were to sell out of stock, could have struck back. If they wanted to against Rahi right now, it would be probably the only move that actually saves their lives. Same time, to succeed in that majority. they'd have to succeed before Rahi manages to uh, take either of them out, and Steph is probably in a vulnerable enough position that... That would be dangerous. Yeah. Absolutely. NC Game Wizard had this Pleasure Dome up by itself for quite some time, making around $300. Now we see two more Pleasure Domes and a Pleasure Dome auction. Isn't that just fantastic? That's always what you like to see when you've got a profitable Pleasure Dome, is a Pleasure Dome auction, right? Game just decides, ah, this would make too much money. Oh, that almost went for seven. I had a heart attack just right then. All right. 20 is a far more reasonable price for this Pleasure Dome. I mean, it's an entire claim and a free Pleasure Dome, right? Rahi dome does. all that expensive. But... Right. Rahi also has a virtual reality already, so this is just going to be a great little building. She canceled that of her other Pleasure Dome, which is a reasonable move with uh, two other on the board already. Yeah, no HQ need to go for the upgraded. double Pleasure Dome move when there's already this much competition for it. So it's good to see that cancel. Man, aluminum's pricing. This move into a few more silicon tiles does concern me a bit. Generally, it doesn't feel like the silicon resources stay that strong, that you need five silicon tiles. Yeah, I would typically agree. I mean, this game, electronics really just isn't all that expensive. There's been no robot buying it up the whole time. We have only one small amount of consumption. Uh, maybe two now. Yeah, going from the colony. That other one just got added as I was speaking because that's just the way the game likes to be sometimes. So I would agree that maybe a bit excessive push into silicon. That said, off-worlds are going to be going up. And that will eh, move the prices of these up just a little bit. Also interesting to me that Rahi moved out of the patent lab before picking up thinking machines. Yeah, I would call that move... Potentially questionable. Steph has managed to pick it up now, of course, so 
Maybe not the worst thing in the world. Don't know if they probably could have gotten it to it as a scientist. Time to start improving. Uh, if you wanted to. World market is assembled. Our but I think awaits. they're going to be okay. One particular detail about that is, you only have one player who can actually attack you right now, right? I mean, Steph is in three hundred thousand dollars of debt. HQ has been Steph's upgraded. probably not actually climbing out of that hole. And even if they do, it's going to be so late that the black market should have gotten quite expensive by then. So, I don't necessarily mind the decision to avoid thinking machines. The counter the argument to me is, to is that network viruses are available. And so that black, those black market the effects should definitely production. be landing. From NC Game Wizard. Of course, how much black market has NC Game Wizard used this game? This is an important question. You always got to watch out for these in our casual games. More the often at the particularly high right. levels, this isn't really a question, but you always have to wonder how we much black market are we actually seeing? Rahi has used 15 black market effects this game, five of those spies. NC Game Wizard has only used eight. Meanwhile, Steph's at two, of course, being in so much debt, and Dryad only managed to get out three before dying to that majority buyout. Looks like Steph has managed to pay off 110,000 worth of debt around. That's good progress, and he's still, you know, he's, he's still got that D rating. So, <laughs> so, things still not looking up too, too great in Steph's world, but hey, you know, we can be glad for the little steps that he's able to take here. Hey, though, I gotta say, Rahi's been pretty impressive this game overall, managing to handle this much much better so far than her opponents. Our continue to improve. And just all these patents, this is just ridiculous. I mean, Rahi is back into a patent lab, of course, going after cold fusion at the moment with water at a dollar. That seems reasonable. That said, it would be nice for Rahi to pick a target. No reason to really go after both players at one time. It is reasonable to uh, go after NC Game Wizard instead of Steph. Just, uh, Steph has been struggling this whole time, and, but hasn't been struggling enough to really debt spiral, so. NC yeah, Game it's actually Wizard been quite movie. impressive. I would agree with you that NC Game Wizard makes a sensible target, but I, I'm just impressed that Steph is oh, back up into a C rating. He's going to be D in like two money. seconds here when the, we tick over again. Routine successful. But managing to hold on, that's, that's a strong move for him. You don't see many players get down to $300,000 of debt and then start pulling things back. I guess the cost for that is that he's never been able to get into an off-world zone, but it's something. Yes, you will see that, as it turns out, paying hundreds of thousands of dollars into your debt is a pretty significant opportunity cost. So you don't, you don't get to buy other players, you don't get to put down nice fancy buildings, you just get to sit there not dying. Which, while better than dying, is finished and not actually orders. that much better, as the it turns out. Alright, Rahi needs 300,000 to finish off. NC Game Wizard. The black NC Game Wizard, online. once again, also in, with that D bond rating. $183,000 of debt, now has what managed to patch Steph. Steph back up to about 150. And Rahi is looking like she's in a good position just to finish this one out pretty easily. Only needs 150,000 more to get this cleaned up. And the off-worlds are pulling in, oh, between 30 and 40,000 a launch right now. So shouldn't be too much longer before NC Game Wizard falls on out of it. And NC Game Wizard did what he could, but without being able to get any help from Steph and with Rahi pulling in this 150,000 or so from the uh, subsidiary, there's just no good way to catch back up. Absolutely, and you can kind of feel maybe some of the weaknesses of NC Game Wizard's found really carrying through into the late game. You don't have those triangles, you don't have that strong basic resource production. And you don't really have access to that decent silicon, which was pointed out as a potentially very important resource later in this game. And all of that's just been Look too painful. The, right, the only major advantage he's had is having these colony off-worlds that somehow uh, aren't getting attacked all that much, but... Well, they are... let's see. 
I'm just trying to check on something, make sure I'm correct here. Yeah, they are hologram. I mean, we do have a hologrammed off world, so maybe people just didn't notice. You are right that there's not enough aggression going on here. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter all that much. Rahi has the buy whenever they want it onto NC Game Wizard. And then Steph still just str there it is. Steph's still just struggling so much. The black market Does have an off-world business. market down now. Hasn't even finished building yet. And Rahi should be able to pretty easily walk on over this one to the victory. I wish I could make this more exciting for you guys, but frankly, when one player is majority bought out, another one has kind of a weak found position and is never really a super dangerous factor in the game. Another one debt spirals out and barely manages to hold on. And then another one just has a competent solid game the whole way through. It doesn't make for a very close, close competition. I'm not gonna lie to you about that. I do like to see the identification of the off-world market into the mutiny. Just doing those little things that could push out a win just a little bit faster. Of course, timing on the victory does matter. The off-world market not taking advantage of the uh, thinking machines. That's true. There's a bit of a poor positioning on it there. Could have pretty easily gotten rid of, for example, the high iron mine when iron's at $10 instead of selling out of all of your iron that you've been holding on to for a very extended period of time. Would have been nice to see. Mm -hmm. Not a huge factor, let's be honest. It, it wasn't going to make the difference in which direction this game swung, but it's just small things you can watch out for, for when the game is close and it does matter, because Thinking Machines is an entire off-world launch swing for a mutiny. The black market is online. So that's minus one launch for your opponent and plus one launch for you if they take it from you and you have thinking machines. That's a really big deal if you're using it correctly. Okay. No. Well, I'm just going to check up on... What else we have going on this tournament as this game is finishing up? Rahi does finally get the buy done. Good move. Ah, soul 8 victory still. That's pretty quick. You can see the majority buy kind of kicking things forward a little bit. Not super fast, but just a little faster than average this time. Just a very solid win taking advantage of uh, what might not stick out as a scientific found. Yeah. It was well done. It was well spotted. And then also... We saw just some small moves from Rahi throughout all of that. Just, it was interesting to see the directions that Rahi was going to go and then stopped moving into the slightly closer silicon position, choosing to commit those secondary buildings, those production buildings, rather than perhaps collecting silicon and generating at the base, making sure to work with steel effectively. Instead of, we saw an that Rahi thought about moving into the steel triangle, but kind of identified that Dryad and Steph were both overproducing steel a little bit, which allows you to just find that, once again, that small edge that can lead to a pretty big victory because it was small edges Rahi was exploiting the entire time until managing to kill off Dryad. And then from that position, you're set up really, really well. But if you don't have all those small edges adding up until that point, you don't end up with the kill. You've just ended up wasting so much time. Your opponent has been allowed to kind of catch back up a little bit because you had all this money invested that was never successful in what it was attempting if you try the kill and don't succeed. So that was a really big turning point, and that was just all kinds of little moves adding up to a big move that then just turned the entire game. And in, in identifying Glass in particular and really being the one to take advantage of that market, about 350000 off of Glass. Uh, the next closest uh, NC game wizard, only making around 30,000 net. Yeah. Certainly, certainly an important detail for Rahi managing to make that glass. And everybody else, this is why I was a little nervous about found locations. I realized that, once again, not an easy map, but when glass is 
clearly going to be an important resource, and you just end up founding so far away from from the glass itself, you can end up in a very difficult position. I would have to go back and review starting prices, but I do wonder if it would have been possible to found away from iron. There are some games where prices start in a fashion that you don't have to actually be close to the iron at the start. You just have to secure it eventually so that it would be easier to get into all these additional resources because over on this southeast corner, you had everything except for iron and carbon. So you always have to wonder, can you exploit that in some fashion or is it going to be too difficult? And actually in the game we played testing out this map seed, I tried to uh, found over in that corner with the uh, silicon. <laughs> and the rest of the founds were pretty similar uh, with two expansiveness and the uh, one scientist who actually did win the game. Gotcha. Difference being that uh, the two expansives in that game didn't overproduce steel, so I was just in a lot of trouble. Yeah, and that is always the risk, is if there isn't that slight steel overproduction, if you don't force them to sell down to produce a little too much of it and sell down by shutting down all the rest of their resources, if that's just not an option, then you can get in quite a bit of trouble if you aren't making it yourself. So... But hey, if it was an idea of blues, then I'm not going to feel bad about suggesting it. 